Hi. Now that you know the basics of JSPs and servlets, you are in a position to come up with your first J2W web application and to deploy it to Tomcat. But before we do that, today I'll be presenting the deployment descriptor file, which is a mandatory component of every J2W web application. By the end of this presentation, you should know what a web.xml is, why we need one, and how to come up with a basic deployment descriptor file. When you deploy your web applications, J2W web applications on web containers like Tomcat or application servers like Web Sphere or WebLogic, these application servers provide your web applications with services like database connection pooling, transaction management, etc. And to use these services or to configure these services for your web application, you use the deployment descriptor file or the web.xml file. You can also declare the various welcome pages for your application, the default welcome pages for your web application. For example, when you type in the URL youtube.com, there is a default page which is running in the background, which was, con which was configured by the YouTube developers already that is serving you the YouTube's homepage. You can configure that using web.xml file. And also you can uh, reference the various JNDI entries from within your web.xml file. And, the, and then these uh, objects, various objects you reference from your web.xml file can be used within your uh, JSP pages, servlets, or even action classes and formings in case of your struts framework. But since we are dealing with servlets right now, I'll be presenting the servlet related elements within the web.xml file and I'll be presenting all the other elements wherever relevant in the future presentations. So let's look at our first web.xml file and the servlet mapping elements which will allow us to diff, uh, give a name to our servlet, do a URL mapping for our servlet class and also pass in the initialization parameters for our servlet class. The root element of every web.xml file is the web app element within which we have the various servlet related XML elements. The first element within the web app element is the display name and the description for your web application. These two, the values here are only used by tools like Eclipse. When you open up a web application project in Eclipse, you will see that the display name, whatever you give here on, on the editor. So this, help, just, this helps a new developer on the team or a deployer to look at their web.xml file and to figure out what exactly this web application does. And the servlet element, is the key element for our servlets. You can give your servlet a name. So the servlet class, what I have here is the com bit servlet dot demo servlet. This is the package and here is the servlet class. And the name I gave for that servlet is the demo servlet. Once we name the servlet, you can type in the servlet name in the URL. So in the URL, you give the server name followed by your web application name, followed by your servlet name and the web container. When the request comes in, the web container knows that it should run this particular servlet and whatever HTML that comes out of this servlet should be sent back to the browser. Taking it a step further, using the servlet mapping, you can do a URL pattern match to your servlet class. So you use the name whatever you gave here, the demo servlet within the servlet name tag and then you define a URL pattern which in my case is start.do. What this means is every time there is a resource by name, any, any name.do within the URL or the URI that comes into the web container, the web container automatically runs the demo servlet and whatever response comes out of it will be sent to the browser. For example, if I have a login page in our web application which says validate login.do, so when the user enters his username and password and when he hits the submit button, the request will be forwarded to a login dot login validate login dot do that that will be what the action of that form the HTML form will be when the request comes to the web container the web container looks at the URI, URI which has the validate login dot do and it will automatically forward it to the demo servlet so that's the simple way of declaring a servlet class giving it a name and then defining a servlet mapping for it and you can also pass in the initialization parameters 
using the init param. This is not complete, this is just the skeleton web.xml what I have here. The init param usually has a parameter name and a parameter value element. I'll be showing that when we do the hands-on in the next presentation. But whatever parameters you declare here within the servlet declaration using the init parameter tag will be given to your servlet's init method at runtime. The servlet container reads the web.xml, loads all the servlets into the memory map, does the URL mapping, and then it creates a servlet config object, fills in that servlet config object, the initialization parameters, whatever you declare here. This could be a configuration path file, a path where you want to, if you are processing files, for example, your users are allowed to upload files to your, using your web application, within your web application, if there is a servlet which is handling these uh, file uploads, you, your servlet might need a place where to copy these files and that location could be passed in as a part of a, your web.xml initialization parameter to your servlet. And in case of struts framework, when we move to struts, you will know, but the action servlet needs a struts config.xml, the path to a struts config.xml file as an initialization parameter and we'll be passing it in right here. And this could also be a, as simple as a database name or any other configuration information that your servlet needs to run and do the job it has to. And as I said, you can do several other things within a web.xml file. You can define your welcome pages, you can define your JNDI entries, and I'll be presenting them in the future presentations. To summarize, you now know what a deployment descriptor file is. It allows you to define the various, to define or configure the various services provided by a web container or application server. It also allows you to map your servlets to a URL and also pass in the initialization information for your servlet classes. In the next presentation, we'll be doing a web app hands-on. We'll be coding our first servlet class in Eclipse. We'll be packaging it into a WAR file using AND and also deploying it to an application server. And the location for this web.xml is your webinf folder so if you remember from the web application basics and the j2w web application structure presentation the location of a deployment descriptor file is within the web webinf folder it goes directly under the webinf folder and you'll be seeing it when we do the hands-on and we package it into a war file so for the next presentation be ready with eclipse and and apache tomcat I have already posted these links on my blog in my previous presentations. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at paratsblog at gmail.com. Until then, keep sharing and learning. Thanks for watching.